and they kind of imagine what's behind there. People get attached to things. They form habits. And if they like the prototype or some version of it, they may not want to let it go. Do the work that hardens your product. You are not ready to give it to the users. It will be hard. Hey, welcome to Coffee with Smoke. I don't have my coffee today, but I already had so much coffee that I'm going to pass on this one. But you grab yourself something nice and warm to drink and let's begin. Today I want to share with you guys a, a little story about the project that I'm currently working on. So normally when you deliver a feature or a piece of software or even you build a software from ground up, you write a bit of feature, you prepare a code and then you write unit tests for it and then you write integration tests for a bigger parts of the feature then you push this all through your pipeline you push this to your ci cd and it gets deployed but what if you don't really know how the product should behave how the feature should behave what it should do you have rough guidelines but you don't know all the details so what do you do well you have one option which is write the software the usual way, the way that basically requires you to write your code, write your unit tests, run them, have unit tests passing, deliver that, and when you decide to change something, you throw away your unit tests, you start from scratch, you change the parts that are not longer correct, and instead what you do is you put new code in place and you write your unit tests again. And that's what normally you would do. So I recently learned about a new approach which can also be very viable and very good to use if you take some assumptions uh, beforehand, right? So the assumption will be that we are not delivering production-ready code. We are actually building a prototype and the approach is called prototyping. Right. So prototyping basically means that we are trying to give the user maximal experience of the full-fledged product, but we are saying, hey, this is a prototype, and most likely we will throw away a lot of the current behavior of the system. We want you to tell us what is wrong with it. Is it behaving the way that you expect? Is it doing the things that you would expect in a way that is convenient to you, that is obvious, that doesn't raise any questions. Um, maybe we should redesign like huge parts of the system or even start from scratch. So there can be two dimensions of prototyping. Vertical kind of prototyping. You basically start from ground to the top, like bottom up, and you start basically with one single experience one single feature and you build it from ground up and you go forward, upward, upward until you have this single feature finished. Right? This is your prototype. This is only one thing that your system is doing, right? It's only this. Um, and this is vertical prototyping. And we have second kind of prototyping, like horizontal one, and that allows you to like have entire workflow, entire system ready, entire thing but you only support the main use cases, but you do it end to end. So user starts here, ends here, and has all of the features that are possible, well, roughly implemented. So we kind of started with this vertical prototyping, uh, and it gave us a lot of understanding, like in details, how much we don't know. Like there were so many questions that basically, we end up waiting for users to answer our questions. And the thing is that users don't always know the answer to your question because, well, for you, it's obvious that you need the answer to this because you're designing the system and you're looking at this very narrow piece of software that does this one thing and you know what variables you can pass to it, you know what are possible outcomes, you just don't know what, how to connect the dots. 
but the user actually never thought about this part of the process and this high to the granularity, this level of detail, right? So they don't know. Uh, and users need to like gather, have a meeting, discuss it, then approve the correct way, um, then send you the update on the meeting. That all takes time. And meanwhile, you're basically standing there and waiting for an answer. So instead of doing that, what you can do instead is consider horizontal prototyping. And that's what we did. So we created a full experience, like we built a new UI, we built, built a backend part, like middle tier layer, some database, some uh, mock data. It's all, that's all in the system right now. And thanks to this approach, we can actually show the system to the users, like show some initial processes that are happening with the system, and we can gather the feedback. The only issue is that we are still writing unit tests for every single thing that we change and create. On top of that, we are thinking on integration tests and all of the process that we will have when it comes to testing. And that's not really very viable because we ended up tearing everything to the ground. And yeah, that's a pain because you wrote not only the code that you're throwing away, not only you wrote unit tests that are often pain to write, but you now have to start from scratch and write unit tests again or correct existing tests to match whatever is the new behavior that should happen, which is even worse because, yeah, who likes to do that? Unless you're very passionate about unit tests, that's often a pain. <sighs> so what you can do instead is consider this prototyping method, like go full-fledged with that prototype, like all the way in. And that basically means that you are no longer writing unit tests, you are not longer preparing for every single error case they may be, you only cover the most important places in your code. You only cover the critical business logic. And that's what you can unit test, but everything else like UI, like some behavior that is a side thing, side effects, you don't worry about that. You don't touch it. All you do is make it work. It can be as ugly as possible. Only requirement is you get it to the hands of the user as soon as possible. Then the user can actually look at your piece of software, test it, play around with it, and you may get some valuable feedback if you're actually meeting the requirements. What you need to do then after you actually completed this project, this, this part of the system, prototyping, you basically most likely will throw away huge parts of your system, if not all of it. Such approach is called throwaway prototyping. To be fair, I think that before I became a professional software developer, all I did was throwaway programming, throwaway prototyping, minus the throwaway part. That's what you do if you don't have, well, good practices to rely on. Like writing good code is kind of like a habit. When you learn how to do it properly, you're kind of feeling bad that you're not doing it. So if you learn that, oh, unit tests, integration tests, like any kinds of tests are actually good and important thing to have. What was what I was talking about? Anyway, <laughs> and now it's time to mention evolutionary prototyping, right? So you start with something, you basically consider it a prototype, and then you refine it, rebuild it. You do go do work that basically makes your prototype an actual production-ready code. You write unit tests, you remove all the bugs, you test it, you do all of the things that are required to make it consumer-grade production system, right? That you can actually share with the users and don't worry that, hey, I have this huge bug that basically erases everything in the system and I have no ways of recovering from it. Now, that's what you do. You test it with the users, user give you feedback. After that, you harden your thing. You, then you treat this part as a like actual core system, like your important parts of the system. And then you can attach new prototypes to it. So you have something that is hardened, that is solid. You can attach new prototype, and this is considered not ready, not production ready. You can disable it in like actual production code. And meanwhile, you can have some beta version that is accessible by a selected group of users. And there is this third way, which is called incremental prototyping. And what that basically means is 
that you have a separate prototypes that are responsible for different parts of the system. And eventually, you basically take all of them and merge in one big production-ready code. You harden each of them separately, and then you merge them, and you have something that is considered, well, end product. If you know the other two, this one is pretty simple. And the last one is called extreme prototyping. And extreme prototyping is used most often in web programming, when you have a web app. And basically what you do is you mock out all of the features, all of the actual services that are behind the UI. You only give a pretty face up front, right? You talk to the users, you show the prototype, and they kind of imagine what's behind there. You describe how the system will behave. Maybe you provide some uh, mocked behavior with the JavaScript or other means of animating the UI, filling it with data that you need to show to describe the whole process. And when that gets approved, you move forward. You kind of build more on the back end. You will build middle tier, right? This thing is now being tested. This thing is connected to your front end, to your UI. And this thing gets discussed. Imagine how this will actually work on living data somewhere. And then you prototype your backend, do the whole process again, harden it, and then deliver the whole thing like a fully fledged product. And that's it. That's the whole thing. So on the one hand, you get reduced cost of building such prototypes because you don't do all of those unit tests, those integration tests and all of that for code that is basically thrown uh, away at some point, right? It's a throwaway code that is only there to visualize the purpose, to test the system um, like in the actual field, like give it actual data and work with the user to achieve something that is considered acceptable. And this is the whole benefit of the prototype. But on the other hand, what you need to be kind of wary of and like take into consideration is that people get attached to things. They form habits. And if they like the prototype or some version of it, they may not want to let it go. When you decide, okay, it's time to move on, it doesn't really work. It doesn't give us the whole thing. It's not complete. You throw this away and then you get voices saying, hey, we like that thing, bring it back. And it's not only users, because you get managers involved and product managers. And wow, people get attached to prototypes. They don't want to throw it away. But you need to always remember that unless you really take a hardening into consideration and you actually do the work that hardens your product, you are not ready to give it to the users. So getting back to our thing, our product, I think that most likely we will go with evolutionary kind of prototyping. We don't know yet. It's still in discussion. We may get to this kind of usability they like and then harden the shit out of it. <laughs> so it's now ready uh, to be battle tested in the actual fire with the actual production data, not only like test sample mock data. And we'll see how things go from there. Yeah, wish me luck because this will be hard. It will be hard. So this is actually the best experience ever if you can develop as fast as possible and try new things as much as you can and then actually kind of distill the true value from whatever was built, whatever was created. And then you take it and do it by the book. You do all the testing and everything. So I wish you guys that you have a chance to try rapid prototyping, that you have a chance to do things from ground up, build a whole new service, like work this way because it's super grand bank. It's fantastic. And thanks so much for watching. Consider subscribing, consider writing a comment down below if you think, oh, prototyping is not the greatest thing. But if you agree and, well, let me know what are your thoughts on rapid prototyping. If you agree and you did this, let me know what you did and 
wasn't worth it, or maybe that was a stupid idea. And like, who does this? Who writes any code without unit tests, integration tests, all of that? Like, how? Where is your design? No, don't do it. Let me know. I need to know what you guys think. What are your approaches to, well, not really crystal clear business requirements? Let me know and I'll see you in the next one. And meanwhile, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe.